Hey everybody, welcome back. David from Atomic Candy and the amazing Miss Lady Pop Hunter. And we are having a conversation about our favorite Halloween films. We were asked by a couple of the subscribers, what's your top 10 favorite Halloween films? And that's a lot harder to do than it sounds like to just come up with 10. And we both come up with a list. But we both have films on each other's list that we would both want on our list. So that's kind of hard to pull off. So we each have a list of 10 or so, because I'm sure there's a couple of honorable mentions hidden in there. Mm -hmm. And so really it's a top 20 list and probably 25. <laughs> but then, you know, she has, like I said, some that I'm like, yeah, you know, I could have put that on my list and vice versa. So it's a little shady. There's a lot of gray area there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can go ahead and take a look at that. And in no particular order, there's no like, this one is number one, this one is number two, because it's the flavor of the month. You know, when you're talking about those kind of horror films, sometimes you're just in the mood for something, sometimes you're not. Yeah. But these are all horror films. What I consider to be a good movie is one that you can watch again because like Jim Carrey's The Mask it was fun when I saw it in the theater but when I saw it again I'm like you know it just doesn't cut it the second time a good mm -hmm. film is a film that you can watch again and then a few years later it comes on and you're like you know what I could watch this again <laughs> that's mm -hmm. a good film these are all these are those kind of films and you want to go first you want me to go first it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. See yeah. how she does that? She throws it right back on me. <laughs> like, okay, fine. I'll go first. Mm -hmm. And I'll start off in 1932 with Boris Karloff in the classic mummy film. The original mummy film, black and white. This film was just fun to watch. And he did a good job of being creepy in the 30s which back then that wasn't easy to pull off because there was a lot more restrictions in films then than there are now. But as the mummy itself, which was not a speaking part really, mm -hmm. you know, even just the scene where it comes to life for the first time and it's opening its eyes for the first time, even though he has to emote through makeup and wrappings, he pulled it off and he did a good job. And I think it's a film that still holds up even now mm -hmm. if you're a classic film buff to go back and watch that. Number two, Amityville Horror House. The original one, 1979, not the remake. Really, I'm not a big fan of remakes. Most of the time, they fail. They fail or they try to trump the original so much that they screw it up. Although yeah. there are a couple of remakes on our lists that pulled it off. But that's rare. But the original 1979 Amityville Horror House, the mm -hmm. tension that's depicted with the father as he's losing his mind, the scene with the priest and the flies, mm -hmm. where the spirit is screaming at him to get out of the house. I, I love that film. I saw the remake. I never saw the original. Never saw the original. Mm -hmm. And then I... I think they did a good job, but again, I never saw the yeah. original, so. You got to be able to compare them. Yeah. Nosferatu. And there's two versions of this. There's 1922, which is a silent film, which is creepy. If you saw it, the way this vampire looks in both versions, there's 1922 and 1979. And the 1979 one is a German film. So you can watch it German with subtitles, or there is a dubbed version, but it's one of the few proper physical depictions of a vampire that I've seen in a film. You know, this guy looked like the classic description of a vampire as opposed to the one that we're all familiar with. Mm -hmm. And he is a creepy guy in both films. He's a creepy character, and it comes over very well. And you have to see the film to know what I'm talking about. Rats are attracted to him. And he kind of looks like one. <laughs> he looks like a shaved rat. But I, I recommend that. Especially, I think the 1979 one, I think, was done better than the 1922 version. But, of course, remember, 
they were a silent film at that time, so they did the best they could. Scanners, number three. If you haven't seen Scanners, you're missing something. Scanners is freaking awesome. I love I that film. You did see it. Mm -hmm. You don't remember. We saw it together. She says she doesn't remember it. It's uh, a film from 1981. I thought it was older than that, but it's a 1981 film. And it's got Michael Ironside in it, who is an underrated actor. That guy was in everything in the 70s and 80s, I swear. Look up Michael Ironside. But um, he was the bad guy in this. And basically, scanners are a rare type of person who has like this intense psychic ability. And he, they can reach out and grab you. You remember oh, they were making, yeah, yeah. 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 I remember he, that. he made that because you know they grab onto someone and they'll they'll like uh, raise their blood pressure so much their eyes will burst out of their head. They're they'll they'll catch fire, crazy stuff. And the scanners, some of them were against each other, and the scanners were fighting. And mm -hmm. it's just a, a cool concept. It was a cool film, and it's an underrated film. It's a forgotten film. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I saw that. The 1978 version. And there's three. Hmm. The 1958 yeah, version. Yeah, we saw two of them. Yeah. The 78 and the, a newer one. one. That came out in the 2000s. Yeah. And the one from the 2000s kind of sucked, I thought. But the 58 one is. I think is, it had is, Daniel Craig in it. Did it? I think so. I don't I think I think you're right. I think so. But uh, Daniel Craig didn't save that film. They. <laughs> But the and the name was something else. Oh, okay, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> She's excited. The uh, 1958 version was okay. It was good. 78 version, I think, was a lot better. It was well done. Of course, it's a pod, a seed pod that falls from orbit. It travels across the universe, falls into Earth's orbit, infects plants, and the plants infect people. This one starred Leonard Nimoy, who mm -hmm. was in it as the Doctor, and. Uh, they make a duplicate of the person and feed off of the body of the person. So they absorb a person and become the person. And is it them or isn't it? You know? And they, they take over a city very quickly, almost in one night. And it's a, an interesting story, the way that it was done. The remake, I think they kind of blew it. Yeah. Number six, Poltergeist. The 1982 Poltergeist, there were two sequels to it. The second yeah. one wasn't very good, although, and I can't think of the actor's name, the mm -hmm. old man who played this, the physical manifestation of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Remember the old preacher? No. In the second film? Mm -mm. There we go. Well, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't do good with movies. So. The second one is worth watching just to see the preacher because, man, he is creepy in that movie. Oh, I think I You know what he's him. saying. Are you lost? Does your mother know where you are? I he was him. creepy. Yeah. The rest of the film was stupid. He was worth watching the film, though. But the original one, 1982, that that film was fun. That film was fun to watch. Yeah, but it wasn't a horror, I don't think. Well, kind of. Yes and no. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know. I, I, you can kind of place it in there. You want to talk about a, a if you want a horror scenes. Remember the scene at the end of the swimming pool. That was, that was, like, like that was a horror film. film right? That was the first movie. Oh. The third film was a made-for-TV movie, and it's total garbage. Yeah, don't even was. watch it. <laughs> it was. But, you yeah, can the, tell it was a TV movie. Yeah, made-for-TV movie with whoever was left of the cast. Just a little girl before and the, she died. And the and the uh, spiritualist, the midget, mm. was in it. Was she? Because I know she died too. Yeah, she. Mm -hmm. But she was in that film. Mm. Village of the Damned, which I think is a 1960 film, which had a sequel in 1995, starring Christopher Reeve. But it was Village of the Damned, 1960, and it was a, a sequel to it, Children of the Damned. And the remake was 1995 with Christopher Reeve. But Village of the Damned is this village, and there's a bunch of blonde kids, and they have psychic powers, and they're in control of the village, and everybody's terrified of them. It's an interesting movie. Mm -hmm. It's not only a horror horror film, but it's a very interesting movie, and it falls in with that genre. 
the fly, not the Vincent Price fly from 1958, which is funny, actually. It was meant to be a horror film, mm -hmm. but it was a funny film. Uh, Vincent Price, king of the horror B films, <laughs> basically. <laughs> He had an extensive career. He was a good actor, mm -hmm. and he did some comedies. He had he was in comedies uh, like Champagne for Caesar, uh, which is actually a pretty funny movie. But the 1958 version is funny. The remake, the 1986 version with Jeff Goldblum, is a creepy film. Bits falling off of the guy. Yeah, it got yeah. real. It was weird crazy. after he turned into the fly. Before that, it was like, okay, what's going on? Yeah. Then he turned into the fly. And when, like, because when he was like physically up enhanced, all over the place. yeah, he was doing like backflips mm -hmm. and yeah, had an insatiable sexual appetite for some reason. But uh, then it got really creepy, and there was a sequel to it without Jeff Goldblum, which kind of, I don't know. But I like the 1986 version of The Fly with Jeff Goldblum. Mm -hmm. Freaks, which is a film genre classic. There's no gore in it, nothing like that. 1932, I'm going back in time again here. 1932, starring actual freaks. And that's what made the movie scary at the time. It was actual circus freaks in this movie. Mm -hmm. The premise being that there was a circus freak and this gold digger, this woman who was like, oh, I love you and I want to marry you and all this other stuff. And they were all worried, hey, man, she's after your money. And so they were keeping an eye on her. And when they found out she really was, they all pursued her. And she's being chased by all these circus freaks, which was kind of funny, actually, because they had the one guy as the snake man. And if you never saw real circus freaks, the snake man is a guy with no arms and no legs, basically. Or the snake man, lizard man, whatever. And he's crawling on the ground with a knife in his teeth. And I'm thinking, what are you going to do with the knife? What are you going to do with the knife? Oh, oh, I don't know. Is he going to hold it in his teeth and stab her? Somebody will get it for him. He's just bringing it along. I guess he was carrying it for somebody. But, you know, and the premise actually in a way makes an odd sort of sense. Because a lot of people may not realize it, but circus freaks, they had a lot of money. Because they got a big commission from the freak show portion of circuses. So they did have a lot of money. And so I was like, you know, that really makes sense when you think about it like that. They were looking out for their buddy and they chopped up this woman. Hmm. Bruce Campbell, you knew he had to be on the list. Evil Dead, one and two, not mm -hmm. three. And I'll tell you why in a moment. And he had uh, um, versus the Evil Dead TV series on Netflix. It's mm -hmm. into, into its third season, I think. But, uh, Evil Dead, which was almost like a college project film, and it was so weird the way that it was filmed that it developed a cult following, and it had Evil Dead to De Dead by Dawn in 1987, 1980. She doesn't know. I'm looking, at her. Saw I'm looking at her like, is it 1987? And she's like, but uh, <laughs> Bruce Campbell killed that film. De Dead by Dawn was hilarious and gory at the same time it's a horror film classic there was a part three but it was more funny than anything they had gone full-on comedy by part three but yeah uh, evil dead 2 dead by dawn uh, definitely worth watching alien the original alien and i i must be on number 11 at this point <laughs> i think i went over the original 1979 alien which was a horror film and it had a great stillness to it it was um it didn't use intense music or shock value to be creepy it was creepy because you could cut the tension in that film with a knife they they did a great job portraying that and then everything afterwards because you know aliens came out in the 80s and that was an action film. Yeah. It wasn't a horror film anymore. Predator, the Predator stuff, and Predator you could almost call fit into the horror genre because it's it's a very intense sort of a, an action drama, an a sci-fi action drama more so than horror. But everything from that point forward, it would, action film, action film, and they got away from the horror aspect of it. I think they do better to reach back to that a little bit. I think that's why they keep screwing these films up. Because they forgot the roots of where they came from. Mm -hmm. 
And I'll throw one out here, one more, I may as well, uh, honorable mention, I guess. Storm of the Century with Colm Fjord. Mm-hmm. Colm Fjord is the, is the um, wizard in this. If you haven't seen Storm of the Century, Stephen King, 1999, I think, 1999. Yeah, I think so. It was a television miniseries, and it was not a book. It was actually uh, a screenwriting by Stephen King for a miniseries. That miniseries is freaking awesome. Yeah, it is. It. It's in, because you yeah. don't know what's going on. So this is one that she'd want on her list, too, mm-hmm. and I think Alien also. But no, not alien, because no, I don't remember alien. I told you well. a scene and you couldn't remember it. So. No, you told me a scene from a different movie. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But that movie, uh, Storm of the Century, you knew something was going on. Mm-hmm. You knew who was causing the problems, but you don't know what he was up to. Yeah. And um, he had the whole town in an uproar. But then there was a lot of dumb moves they made. In the ending... Um, really, really got you because you, you I, well, I guess it don't matter if we spoil it, but yeah, spoiler alert the dad was the only guy not going along with the town, and his wife went along mm-hmm. with the town thinking, Oh, we're gonna be good, and she's the one that got picked, and um, you know, yeah, she walked right into the guy's trap, yeah, the the, the uh. The Colm Fjord's character, I can't remember the character's name. Or the I don't name. even know if he had a name, actually. Yeah, I think it was Aaron or something. I'm trying to remember. remember. He had a name. But, I don't uh, remember his name, but um, he played it. That actor's in a lot of stuff. Yeah, but, um, he, he, he did a good job on that. He, he, did a good job. he had this ability where he, he knew if you were hiding something and they knew what it was. So like people were like threatening him all this because he killed some people in the beginning of this. And it was like, you did this and that. And he was like, oh, really? What about when you did this? And he just knew. And then everybody would be like shocked and they'd shut up because mm-hmm. he could expose their sin, which I think would be a cool power. <laughs> but I'll take a break here and we'll let you go ahead and rattle off some of yours. Um, my, the first one is The Shining with, um, uh, Jack Nicholson. Yeah. The 1980s version was a great film. It was a slow film, a lot of drama, a lot of tension, Mm -hmm. but it slowly built. So it wasn't like fast paced. It wasn't a lot of, uh, jump scares. Yeah. It was just the jump scares sh- are fun, but it can't make the film. No, and you can't have too much in one film. Yeah. You can't have every third scene in a jump scare. And, it, and then the music. Yeah, and then the music builds up, making you think something's going to happen and nothing happens. Yeah. But this film was just really good. Um, the house, from the outside to the inside, just how Jack Nicholson just kind of fell apart. Yeah, and, um, lost his marbles. Yeah, and then you wonder why he was the one lost his mother and his family was fine and they were all in the same environment and it wasn't all in his mind because the wife started to see it yeah so but then, you, you wondered that for a while like is he just crazy or apparently not yeah but then they had a, a weird picture at the end that you know caused a lot of wonder yeah a lot and of I, speculation yeah. about, the, about the purpose of that of that uh, photograph because mm-hmm, he was in the picture. There was a remake. It was a what made-for-TV oh, miniseries. It, it, it altered the story quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And I think the original was better. But, yeah, that's one that I would have liked on my list. Mm-hmm. Um, then Halloween. The original. But the original. The 1978 the, version. Right. Yeah. Um, the 78 part one and two goes together. So if you've seen that's, both of that's them. That's true. They're actually one film because it picks up where it left off. And they did a good job with bringing back the um, main characters and everything. It was just a good film. I even liked the third film, which had nothing to do do with with Michael Myers. (laughs) And I think what they were going for is every year on Halloween to put out a movie. 
named Halloween and something happens. And but the fans people, just didn't get it. Yeah. yeah. People were so stuck on Michael Myers for the first two years <laughs> to where it's like, whoa, wait a minute. So then they had to bring it back. They so had to bring it, him back because he was killed at the end of the second film, which was their intention was yeah, for him to die. To end the movie. Yeah. So once you got to the third film, his coming back was kind of like, okay, wait a minute. He clearly died in the second film. Now you came up with this weird way of him coming back. And then yeah. the story started kind of falling off. Yeah. Because then you had a niece that came out of nowhere. Like, where did this niece come from? And all kind of stuff. But the original one I thought was really good. Then we have It. The original and the remake. Yeah. Because That's two. But no, yeah, the original was a miniseries. Right. And then the remake, um, which was surprising because I kind of didn't want to see the remake because the original, I read yeah. the book and the book is super long. And the, um, the original one was a week long miniseries. So mm -hmm. when you hear a remake is coming out in the theater, you're thinking, how are you going to put five days of two hour film into two hours and five days of two hour film that only covers like a third of the book at that yeah and well then they think they did it right with the new one because they just told a part of the story and they're going to continue yeah so they, they and, and they were sense. real smart about that because if they tried to condense the entire film into two hours it would have just totally been a mess and the way the contrast is with that one too is that the modern it is creepier yeah the original it is funnier the, yeah um tim curry as 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 pennywise he was funny creepy and funny at the same time mm -hmm. and which the new it he's not funny no he's not funny and that funny. guy is a good actor because he's he the is. one that plays in um castle rock the yeah. tv show and i think he did a phenomenal job and I hope they bring it back for a season two. Mm -hmm. um, they need to explain what's going on. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I was, and I liked the way they did that show because I was able to follow it. And then I got kind of lost on the last, on the last episode. So mm -hmm. it, um, it kind of threw me off, but it was a good show. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is The Thing, the original 1982. Well, that's the second one. No, the second one. Because the uh, the original one is 1951, mm -hmm. and it's more like a it's more like Frankenstein the alien mm -hmm. is uh, is being killed off by a group of soldiers at an Arctic station, mm -hmm. and so he he's a person, and he he's he looks like Frankenstein's monster in a spacesuit, yeah. and then um, John Carpenter redid it in 1982, and that was a really good film yeah that was an excellent film um i like again it was a slow paced film you knew something was going on you just didn't really get what was going on they, they build up to it mm -hmm. they had some jump scares but it wasn't too much and then they remade it a few years well not you yeah, know i think in the 2000s yeah. and it wasn't good because what they did is they tried to go do like they, a little prequel. Yeah, and they to it. Fast paced it. Yeah, it was big time. It was just but flying. The way the 1982 ended, they could have picked up at that point. Yes. Even if they say, okay, we're gonna do it in I don't know what year that other one came in, but it was in the 2000s. They could have found them and picked up from there. So it could have it could have worked. If they had put more thought into it, if they had just picked up where they left off instead of trying to do a prequel or a retelling of the story. Um, but the original thing, really good. Um, yeah, I think they had some good actors in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so It was well acted. They yeah. had a, it's another film just like with The Shining. Mm -hmm. The way that they pull it off is with a lot of tension. A yeah. lot of tension in the film. Mm-hmm. Um, the Exorcist, nineteen seventy-three yeah, Exorcist, 
was good with the little girl, uh, Reagan. Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Pretty um, the, the, that acting was good. The whole thing was re- really good. What I didn't like um, later on, some years later, they made another movie trying to explain how she got possessed. Yeah, but they had some sequels to it. Yeah, that was supposed to be prequels. But it still didn't explain how she got possessed. <laughs> no. But, you know, um, oh, oh, go ahead. ahead. No, I was going to say, you know what's funny about it is the director of that film. Because there's a lot of complaints from the actors about the director. Mm-hmm. Uh, Friedkin, mm-hmm. uh, Friedkin, William Friedkin. That, like, if you remember the one scene where the priest is sitting at the table mm-hmm. and the phone rings and he jumps like that. Mm-hmm. That's because... Friedkin walked up behind him and discharged a shotgun behind his head to make him jump mm-hmm. so that the jump on the camera would look authentic. Mm-hmm. And then when the uh, the mother gets thrown into the dresser, mm-hmm. she went to the hospital because she was really thrown into the dresser. She had a cable on her mm-hmm. and she said um, they had done a couple of dry runs and she was like, really be careful because that, you know, that dress is not giving. I'm getting it's it's hurting me. Mm-hmm. And he was like, whatever. And he told the us uh, he told the uh, coordinator, tear it. And they pulled it so hard she ended up in the hospital. Oh wow! But she actually crashed through the uh, dresser. So yeah, he was a jerk on that uh, to the actors on that film. Mm. <laughs> he got a good effect out of it though. Yeah, he did. Um, then we got Rosemary's Baby, the oh, original yeah. one. That one was really good if you saw it. Um, the lady uh, wants to get pregnant. Um, and her husband is in a cult. Come to find out he's in some kind of weird cult. They take the baby. Um, she is freaking out because they make her think she never had a baby. Didn't they make her think she didn't have a baby? Or am I getting something mixed up? Uh, no, I think she knew she had the baby. Something happened in the movie. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I thought she didn't. They tried to tell her she didn't have a baby, but she she knew she well, had no, a baby. Well, no, she didn't know how she got pregnant. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, they snuck she, in the they room. Did, they did they some kind of her. ritual on her. Yeah, they drugged she, her. That's she got what pregnant it was. that way. Mm-hmm. And the whole, everybody in the apartment complex was in on it. Yeah, because everybody in the car, apartment complex was, was, in a, was in a cult. And in the dad, you know, the husband was a part of that cult. They had a remake of that, but I didn't see it. I have it, but I didn't watch it. But I do have the DVD. Mm-hmm. They um, redid it. And um, I always said I was going to watch it and just never did. Uh, Psycho. Uh, the original. Norman Bates. Yeah. And um, that was good. I only ever saw it a few years ago, one time. But I thought that was that was really good. How he was pretending to be the mom, mm-hmm. or he he had a split personality disorder, and he was his mother. <laughs> <laughs> Something weird like that. <laughs> um, the birds by well, uh, also- Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, Psycho really? had a had a part two starring the same actors. Oh, I never know. No, it was a, it wasn't as good as the original, but it was fun. I it know was, they have it a, was in the eighties. I know they have a TV show Bates Motel that's based on that very loosely. Very loosely because <laughs> I never watched it, but it seems like the mom and the Norman Bates character are messing around. Oh, that's in that's know. the. From what I've seen, that's the vibe it gives off. With the, so I don't yeah, I wouldn't want to see that either. So with Psycho, the way that um, Alfred Hitchcock pulled it off is, you know, he he didn't have to show anything. Yeah. It's the same. The original Halloween too. There's no blood in it. No, there's but no they allude to a lot and of you, things. But it's still good. Yeah. But and the, it's not the gore fest that you have now in yeah. uh, horror films. Or thrillers or whatever yeah, they, they call it. Show you guts flying all over the place. Yeah, and that really takes away. I think it can sometimes. It depends on the film, but yeah, it can. Mm-hmm. Like um, I saw the original Saw, the first Saw. Yes. It wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it had a storyline that you could follow, but the second one, it started out the gore fest, and from then mm-hmm. on, it was just like 
Let's what see are they how, up to, like, seven or eight or something now? Something weird. Yeah. But it was just, let's see how gory we could get. We already went this far. Let's keep pushing the boundaries. So it, it, it just got stupid. In the, in the sequel to Psycho, he was released from the mental hospital, like, mm. 20 years later. They cut the timeline in perfectly so that it would fit for the date that it was released in the 80s. Mm. And it was the same actor. And he, he went right back to what he was doing. That's <laughs> why so it didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work. Time and hospital. But it was, it's a fun film, though. It's an underrated film. Mm -hmm. The Birds, another <laughs> uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock film. I don't know if it was a horror or not. I guess so, if you're scared of birds. Well, those birds were just attacking people. I 1963, mean, just, The Birds. Just random birds, just out of nowhere. Start they never stuff. explained why the birds were no, acting the way they were. No, and they were. never said where the birds even came from because the people were on an island <laughs> and it was just all of a sudden a million birds show up and started attacking. And then the people. premise even for why that woman was on the island in the first place, one of the main characters, there's two main characters, a male and a female. Yeah. The reason she was on the island was stupid anyway. Well, she was flirting with that guy. Yeah, you chase somebody to an island from New York to flirt that that's uh that's stretching it you got to be a pretty hot guy <laughs> yeah she wanted to flirt with some I dude guess. and do all kind of mess and that then she got herself caught up yeah with them birds uh night of the living dead the, the original, original zombie night. film yeah basically. i think that's the first time zombies were talked about yeah, in movies. i believe so um, and you saw the the zombies coming up out of the grave and ripping people apart and eating body parts. And for 1968, that was a lot. That is very risque. Yeah, that's, that's something that just wasn't done. And I remember seeing it as a child. Mm -hmm. They remade it. It was um, black and white. Yeah, was it, it? it yeah. was black, black and, and white. white. And I think they were even watching it on um, Halloween, the movie Halloween. I believe. I think I you're think right. Uh, when they were doing the, when they were babysitting, mm -hmm. um, that was the movie on the TV. They call that an Easter egg. Yeah. Yeah, there's an Easter egg in Halloween three, where in Halloween three they're watching the TV and it's Halloween one. Yeah. On the television. I remember, remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, they did remake Night of the Living Dead. I can't remember when, but it was in the nineties, I believe. Yeah, and it's it, been copied a bunch of times too. I mean, Walking yeah. Dead is copying it. Everybody yeah. copies the premise of Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, I mean, it was a really good film. Um, I can't remember a lot about it because it was so long ago. Mm -hmm. But um, I do remember the movie. It was really good for that time. Like when I saw it, it was in the 80s, and you're sitting there watching these dead bodies come out of the grave, and then you see them eating on body parts and they pulling up livers and the stomach and they <laughs> the scene that I remember is the uh is the guy walking through the cemetery mm -hmm. and he's wearing a suit and then when he passes you realize he's wearing the um burial suit because it's, it's, it's the, open in the back, in the back. Mm -hmm. there's nothing behind it it's just the front of the suit um Friday the 13th the first one with uh, the first one with uh, the mother is the aggressor in that movie. Mm -hmm. It's actually not Jason. Yeah, Jason doesn't show up until part two. Well, he he appears at the, at the, at very, the at very end. end. Of the film and he looks like a twelve year old. Yeah, he looks like a little kid mm -hmm. when he comes mm -hmm. out of the water. Yeah. But throughout the film, he's not a part of it. It's the mother. It's the mother. Um, she's the aggressor in the film because the camp counselors weren't watching Jason and he drowned. Mm -hmm. So they were, she fool, wanted they were to, fooling around. Yeah, they were fooling around and she wanted to get them back and she killed them all for what? That's what she did, right? Yeah. Oh, did I mess that one? No, you're right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I saw it. I remembered that. Yeah. Um, Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, Nightmare uh, Before Christmas. Nightmare on <laughs> Elm Street. 
<laughs> oh, Nightmare Before Christmas is a good film. But it's not a horror film. I know. Nightmare on Elm Street, the original the one. First one. I don't know if it was a horror. Yeah, but it was. It, 1984. It was, but it was still fun. Freddy yeah, that was, was bloody, actually. The film was kind of bloody. It, it was. It was very bloody. Um, Freddy was funny. Um, they had a lot of parts in there where they were starting to do more with um, with the cinematography, you know, doing the scenes, the special effects, like when the girl was sucked through the bed and yeah. the thing with the bathtub oh and... God. All of that. The hand. Uh, the yeah, hand, the uh, hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. And the last one, Rose Red in Stephen King, 2002. Yeah, that's another miniseries. That was a miniseries. Um, a group of people were brought together in this house, but the house was constantly changing. It's a mansion. It's a huge house. Yeah. It, but it was constantly changing. Like on um, Harry Potter, it, when you, if you saw the, you, a lot of you have probably seen Harry Potter with the, the school, the staircase moves, the room changes, mm -hmm. position, things like that. Yeah, this one, it was, it's a little girl in the film, and they find out near the end, I think, that she's the one causing everything to happen yeah the house is feeding off of her yeah everybody in the film has some type of ability you have a psychic you have uh what's the the writer the person that yeah, can um the automatic uh writer yeah, yeah um i can't remember the rest but you have everybody has a some type of uh ability and they're all there trying to figure out what's going on with this house and the house is adding rooms. The rooms are moving. It's taken away. It's a, it's a lot of stuff um, going on. It's a good movie, though. Um, I but, like the one psychic in that. The man? The guy who's not scared. Yeah. Because, like, they have a jump scare scene where he's, like, in bed. And he's, like, eating ice cream and watching TV in the middle of the night. And then this, this like, rotting corpse just jumps out at him. And he's, like... What do you want? You know, I'm, leave me alone. Yeah. You know, because he sees stuff like that so much. Yeah, He's all the time. Completely desensitized to it. <laughs> and spirits jump out on him to tell him things or try to get him to do things. He's like, go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that guy cracked me up. Yeah, he was good, but he was a um, good psychic, and he's mm -hmm. the one I think that figured out that it was the girl doing everything. Mm -hmm. She was the one. That was causing everything to happen. But, um, yeah. I know we both went over 10. Yeah, we went over 10. And there's some others <laughs> that we like. I know it's one that I really like, but I can uh -huh. never remember the name of it. It's the one in the house. Yeah, and they, re they did there's a remake. There's two versions. A 50s version and a 90s version, yeah, I think. Yeah, um, somebody invited these people to stay in this house for, like, the weekend. There's Liam Neeson in the second film, I think. Yeah, and it's I the, think that the guy, professor. Um, Owen Wilson, I think, was in it. And basically, the premise, if anybody remembers the title of this one, you can put it down below, is that he brought people there to do an experiment. Mm-hmm. And I guess he didn't expect anything to actually happen, but the house actually was haunted. Yeah, and that was the premise of the original movie. Mm -hmm. um, so they, it was a remake, and it was it wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad remake. Um, but I really like that movie, and I can never remember the name of it. But I did find it on Netflix or Hulu or Amazon something because we watched it. Yeah, we did watch it because you remember. It's yeah, like, I remember. But we that. saw the remake. I could never find the original. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to watch out for that because the stuff on Netflix and Hulu, it's there and it's gone. Yeah, because we were so, watching Route doing? 66. Yeah, Route it just which is totally a good show. disappeared. On. Classic. Uh, we didn't television. even finish. We had like five episodes <laughs> left. And then it's gone. Yeah, and then it just. Took the whole thing off. It's not even in our history. Anymore. It's a lot, Netflix. No, that was Hulu. Thanks a lot, Hulu. <laughs> Same difference. Yeah. Anyway, 
I know that doesn't even scratch the surface. No. We can sit here and do a top hundred list, honestly. Yeah, because if you There's really sat down drums. and think about it, because these are the ones we just came off the top of our head. Yeah, the ones if that we saw a list, we could be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of that. So, what did you like? Do you uh, like the, the uh, films on our list? Do you have others you would add to a list of your own? Put it in the comment section down below. Let us know. Yeah, what you make think suggestions because we sure. watch it. People have suggested movies mm -hmm. and TV shows for us to watch, and we've watched it. Yeah, so you never know. Yeah. Or someone else watching, you know, they might be inspired by some of the films we talked about. Maybe yeah. you never saw it. Like I'm sure a lot of people have never seen Scanners, and that movie is cool. <laughs> it just is. It's, it's fun to watch. It's just all right. <laughs> See how she does me. Why would you do that to me? I'm so awesome. Mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. But yeah, if you know any uh, <laughs> horror films, because I love horror films and I do yeah. um, watch them. And I always go on uh, the internet and look for TV shows and movies and <laughs> make this big list and then we watch them all. Mm -hmm. Or what we can find on them. Uh, what you can find. Yeah, because we have like four term. different TV watching apps. And I'll search through them all, and then we'll watch them. But if you see something that's not here, let me know, because, um, again, I love horror films, so I'll, I'll find it or try and find it and watch it. Yeah, or somebody else might see your suggestion, and yeah. maybe it's something they never saw. Yeah. So go ahead and put your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed having our horror film conversation with us. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you don't mind. Always appreciate it. Share it if you can, subscribe if you're new, and check out our other videos. We do a lot more than just movie discussions. So we will see you again soon.